she came to visit me in Michigan. We played ukulele together, and now she's in Maui with her mom. And so thank you so much, Anne, for coming in. Thank you for inviting me, Marlies. You're just everywhere. <laughs> you're here, you're there. <laughs> I love to travel and the ukulele has freed me. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. used to be able to do this because it's like there has to be a, a home with a piano or, or a hotel with a piano. And now I just bring my own instrument. <laughs> there you go. It's one of the things that I know a lot of people really enjoy about the ukulele is you just sling it over your shoulder and you're off, right? Yes, it's your Let's ticket see. to all ukulele jams. If you've got a ukulele, you're welcome. Come in, join us. <laughs> exactly. I love it. So what is your musical background in a nutshell? Well, so um, I saw a picture of myself in Brunei where I was born playing a toy piano, but I didn't receive my first lesson until I was, oh my gosh, it was quite late. I was like eight years old on Okinawa. So I played the piano and then I got, uh, let's see, we were introduced to the guitar in school. And then I had one guitar lesson, I think that was it. But then I learned about chords, you know, and also my piano teacher um, taught me theory. So when I was 14, I started to compose because once you know how to, you know, write notation, then you start to just write. And I would always put chords on my melodies. I wrote the high school, my high school class song and... Cool. Um, yeah, so that was basically it. I nearly majored in music um, um, at university, but I chickened out when I found out, you know, you needed another language requirement and everything. So I, I stuck to engineering. <laughs> but you don't need a musical degree to be a musician by any means, do you? Don't, but then I felt, you know, after I had been composing for a while, I really wanted to get feedback, not just, oh, that sounded good. You know, I wanted to know, well, how do I develop? So, oh my gosh. So at the age of, oh my goodness, 40 or 41, I auditioned and got into conservatory. So I did a bachelor's degree in music full-time, four years. Wow. That's awesome. And now you live in Boston. You yes, play the organ there and on the regular yeah. in a, in a church yeah well Oregon is interesting because um again you know I got into it in a very interesting way uh so I hadn't played the organ for decades since high school literally and then there's a church that was looking for someone and so yeah so I stepped in <laughs> and now every weekend and all the funerals I play yeah gotcha so do, do you play the ukulele at the church as well, or just the organ? Just the organ. Yeah, there's gotcha. also a, a electric, a digital piano. So I switch ah, between gotcha. two for variety. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you get involved with the ukulele? I mean, you well, are very involved with the ukulele. <laughs> you know, I came to Hawaii, um, let's see. First time was round the world. I stopped to see my sister for three weeks. And then again in 2007 to perform. And my mother had moved here by then. And then in 2010, Thanksgiving Day, that was the third time. And then I stayed for six years. And the entire time, even though the last four years I lived next to a ukulele builder, I was not interested in learning to play the ukulele people have told me That's about me. it you know there's a ukulele festival every year <laughs> and i just paid lip service to it because you know all the prejudices of, of playing the classical guitar and and um just not realizing that it's a real instrument so only when i decided i was leaving the last six months did i get an ukulele and learn how to play it and then so that was like my souvenir after I left Hawaii it, it's like I, I went into ukulele in a big big way not intentionally you know at first it was just oh my gosh I could sing I could accompany myself 
singing all these songs I love and want to be great if somebody could join me. And if it's so easy to learn, surely other people can learn quickly as well. But what I didn't realize was that because I have a musical background and already play the piano and guitar, my fingers are used to doing this and this. But most people, if they <laughs> have never had any musical uh, sort of instrumental training, they're not used to just commanding their fingers to do things like uh -huh. that so um it, it's been a it's been a quite a learning process for me on how do I get someone to pick up an instrument and and engage uh -huh. music <laughs> so did you was there like a switch that turned on did you see like I mean how did that happen like all of a sudden you've been here for five and a half years and all of a sudden now you're gonna do the you know the ukulele I I find that fascinating because I think that happens for a lot of people. You know, they've known that the ukulele is out there and you can play it and all that stuff. Like, same for me. I just kind of like, when my daughter turned 21, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get myself a ukulele as my birthday present because you turned 21. <laughs> it was one of those things. It's like, you know, I've known about the ukulele just like you. I mean, you live in the same town, the same state. You know what I mean? You're very close to it. But what happens So you just actually decide, okay, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to start playing it. What happens? No, not at all. I, I resisted. I mean, living next to a ukulele builder, right? I, I never even stepped inside his workshop to, to marvel his work. I think I asked, well, something? how much did you sell it for? That's all I, you know, I it took a lot of convincing. My students, my colleagues, because I was teaching at the college here on Maui and you know, I think it was finally Daniel Ho, the six-time Grammy Award winner. He, I invited him to um, be a guest lecturer in two of my classes. And then he asked me about ukulele. And I said, I've never, I don't, I don't have, I don't know anything about it. And he had just designed one. It's in the Grammy Museum right now with uh, the son of uh, Pepe Romero. It's under the label of Romero Creations. And she, he said, well, I could give you a good price and I'll throw in some of my books. You could teach yourself. So I thought, you know what? All right. You know, being Chinese is like such a great deal. I'll do it. And then my colleague, Joel Katz, said, well, if you could teach yourself a few chords, you could join my intermediate class. So I thought, okay, yeah. Christmas, I'm going to teach myself. And then one of my students was leaving and he was a carpenter and he gave me this um, tropical, sorry, this uh, 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 ukulele stand made of tropical wood, tropical hardwood. So it was like all these forces came together. So I thought, well, I'll just, you know, but it was not easy because it's like, I need the sheet music, right? I've never learned an instrument without, notation before I and see. the norm in the ukulele world is here's the song sheet it's like what chord names chord diagrams and lyrics that's it how do you know how to play yeah. it yeah Turns out most people already know the songs and I didn't I didn't grow up right. in that culture you know so yeah. yeah so I had to get sheet music for every song and figure it out and then my teacher my colleague Joel he's like well just watch or listen to my recordings and I didn't learn music that way I can't just yeah. listen to something and figure it out I need to see it in front of me so yeah. that was interesting that is interesting because I don't read music actually now I do a little bit but I did not read music and I think just going to venture that a lot of people who play the ukulele are used to having a song with the chords in front of it. And they know, um, star shining bright up, then you change the chord. And da, 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 da. So they kind of get an idea of like what it sounds like and when you change the chord. And if it's on top of the little word, then you know, okay, it changes into C there. And <laughs> I mean, I kind of, in your case, I went the other way. I went the reverse and then, you know, starting to learn. I don't know if it's better or worse, but I think it's interesting because um, I, I know I, I just love to hear people's stories about how they started playing the ukulele and why or who encouraged them or what group they fell into or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a group over here in Portland is the Port Portland Ukulele Wednesday. And I played one song on Facebook 
And my daughter's uh, second grade teacher who hadn't taught her for about 15 years said, you should try the uh, ukulele Wednesday. I'm like, what is that? You know? <laughs> and so I went and there was this whole group of people who play ukulele. I was like, you're kidding me. I had no idea there was this whole community of people who did all this stuff, you know, go uh, play in public and stuff. So I just think that's so fun. That's just, and you, yeah. you're all over the place on that. You go all over the place. Well, Ukulele Wednesday, I in the UK started in London. I think about fifteen years ago. It's huge. I think they have, let's see, this amazing songbook. And then one lady returned to Singapore and said, "I'm going to start a Ukulele Wednesday." I actually started Ukulele yeah. Wednesday in Boston in 2018 January. I didn't call it Ukulele Wednesday, but the Ukulele Wednesday songbook, it's like one song per sheet, the same format. And they've got a, a whole team of people curating right. great yeah. songs. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. So yeah. tell us about Thursday, Record Thursday. So this is one of the things I've actually watched you grow, not just you, but your group grow in Three Chord Thursday, where it's just, what what is it? Yeah, Three Chord Thursday. So it started, it was in the pandemic. Yeah, just at the dawn of the pandemic. I just learned Zoom because all my classes got canceled and I had to learn how to use Zoom, how to host it. So I tried different initiatives like Global Karaoke. I tried um, songs in the time of Corona, but Three Chord Thursday was the one that stuck. So in early April, 2020, it's like, well, somebody came up with Two Chord Tuesday it didn't stay. And then I thought, well, it could be monochrome Monday, um, ukulele Wednesday, three chord Thursday. It could be four or five chord Friday, six chord Saturday, seven chord <laughs> Sunday or something, you know, but the whole three chord, it just, the way it started was I came across a group. It was three chord ukulele group. And I thought this is great because I always wanted to learn just three chord songs. Right. But I was too active. This is what happens when you join a ukulele group that's been around a long time on Facebook. You come in full of ideas and they're like, hey, you're too much. So they shut me out. So I thought I'm going to start my own group. I don't care what they do. It's not going to be on Facebook. It's just going to be this every week. I'll have a different theme. Yeah. And I'm part of the Ukulele Union of Boston, which has lots of different local chapters. Right. And I just thought, well, you know, I'll use their meetup group way. And, you know, I'll just see if I get people to join. And we had a lot of people. We had over 50 people consistently every single week. You know, you couldn't see everybody on the screen. Um, and there was a lot of people that were very professional. They're, you know, they had their own bands. They were singers. And and so we had great leaders. Yeah. And it became a community. Yeah. Sounds nice. Yeah. That sounds really nice. And you still do it. And it's still, you have a, a group on Facebook and you have... Uh, people who are very consistent to to come in and do that. It's a great place to get started. So if someone just picking up the ukulele and they say, I don't even know three chords, is that something they can still do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the thing about the three chords is it doesn't have to be only three chords. It could be two chords, it could be more than three chords. Yeah, it's always possible to reduce a multi-chord song to fewer chords. Yeah, like um, Autumn Leaves. There was one, let's see, Dr. Ook had more than 20 chords. I reduced it to 11 chords. You know, did I 11 or six chords? I can't remember, but it's possible to reduce. Absolutely. So with the three chords, um, it, it's the people who are more advanced, they know they could improvise. And it's fun, sure. right? Because I, I remember going to an in-person jam session. Everybody's doing the steady three or four chords, but the real virtuosos are going up and down the neck, yeah. doing all sorts of riffs because that's what you want. You don't want sure. everybody to be playing lots of different chords, difficult stuff, right? You want everybody to be really steady and keeping a back beat, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is really nice too, because... um. You know, I think when people first start, I know this is true for me being in a group, 
hey, if all you know is the C chord, then when the C chord comes up, you just play the C chord. And then, you know, if you know the C and the F chord, well, then you can go ahead and play those two. And if you can't quite get it, the beauty is there are plenty of people who will drown out your <laughs> so-called mistakes, which I don't think they're mistakes, but you know, um, it's a wonderful way to um, just kind of also see what your potential is because I think once you start talking or meeting people, you say, oh yeah, I was there a year ago or I just got my ukulele, you know, or this is what I did. And you find out that, you know, really uh, you can have a good time your first day out, you know, playing with a group of people yeah. And, yeah, and just after, be part of something. Yeah. After I left Hawaii, I started, I knew I was going to, before I left Maui, that I was going to uh, start a two-year degree, a master's degree, MA in music in London, well, in England. And I had a lot of flexibility. So when I was in London, I joined a local um, ukulele club that met every Tuesday. And 95% of the songs I didn't know yeah, I did not know, but I was so grateful that the first half of the evening in a pub, they would do easy songs. So that's how I got my practice, my 10,000 wow. hours just repeatedly. Yeah. So I thought this is a great way. I mean, what other instrument can you learn by practicing with lots of other people? Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of people don't think they're practicing. You're just enjoying yourself, but you're actually yeah. practicing. Absolutely. Practicing is fun. Oh, so yeah, what are some lot. of the fun things that you've seen as a teacher? Uh, you know, what are, what is something you would say to a new, a brand newbie who may feel intimidated or not have a lot of confidence when it comes to just even getting started or continuing or committing? Well, the great thing about the ukulele is that it's not like you're learning the violin or the cello or the flute where you're expected to be very good and pursue excellence. Ukulele is very much a social instrument. I think of it as a, a stepping stone. It's the easiest instrument uh, to get you engaged in music. So there should be no intimidation. It's just four strings, no expectation. Everybody's different. And because most of my students are actually my age or older, everybody's got their set of, um, how do you call it, preferences and constraints, so to speak. It's like, oh, I can't use my little finger or, you know, uh, I'm not used to doing it this way. So it's all, being a teacher is all about how do you adapt to that? Yeah. How do you fix this issue, fix that? And I've seen, oh gosh, I've got amazing stories of how determined some of them are. You know, it's really where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Like one lady, she must be my oldest student. She's 85 years old. She's always wanted to do music, but she never had a chance. And she loves music. Yeah. So she took my ukulele and music theory class. And now she's doing piano with me. Nice. And, and whenever you know we're talking she just she knows how to analyze because music theory you know you don't have to play instrument to do to be good at music theory but you do need to think because it's all logical uh -huh. right so she's able to explain oh yeah that's a secondary dominant and I do see how, how this relates to that it's from the circle of fifths everybody else is like what you know because here's the thing lots and lots of ukulele teachers They'll teach you what to play, how to play. But the minute you ask why, why is there a B7 before the E minor? What are you going to say? Because it says so right there, you know? So I have these inquisitive adults that say, why? I want to know why. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. that. So you ask me what is fun about teaching. It's getting inquisitive adults to challenge me. You know, that whole that whole thing of the B7 and the E minor, I mean, I've seen it over and over and over again. There must be some reason for it, you know, like kind of thing. And uh, looking for patterns in certain um, in certain songs or in certain genres or in certain this is or that, you know, and maybe it's a cultural thing or who knows. But um, I just I find those things so interesting. I, I don't think the great composers study theory first or the great singers, songwriters. They definitely did not study theory first. It just sounded good and made sense. Theory came after. It's like, oh, 
it's because of this because we want logic it's a sound like right. this yeah right so we what, want what it some... sorry that's okay we have like just a few more minutes and i just i kind of say um i wanted to ask you to offer to someone who may be standing right in front of you something encouraging to them um when it comes to picking up I would say the ukulele or starting any instrument like what would your tidbit of wisdom be for them? Oh, I'm sure you have many. You got to choose one, Anne. Uh, <laughs> okay, you could choose two. Okay. <laughs> well, see, I just had two goals when it came to teaching piano. And I would say the same for ukulele or any instrument, which is one, to be able to read music so that you could play from it. A lot of people quit because they have such a hard time reading music. In the case of ukulele, it's just song sheets. So that's a no-brainer, yeah? Uh, lyrics and chords. The second one is to experience flow. Flow as in you're so engaged in it, you forget how hard it is, right? How painful it was to get here. You're so You're in the moment because once you experience that, you won't forget it. Yeah. And what I and what I love about the ukulele is that um you could see people playing and then you could just come and join them and just it's as if you've been there forever. You know, where else can you do that? Can you bring your violin to an orchestra and say, Hey, I want to play? They're gonna say, yeah. Have you auditioned? You know, you also yeah. can't do that with the choir. You can't just butt in, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe barbershop you know, quartet if you know your part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the fun thing is too that like you say, you know, a lot of people come to music a little later. Um, they know that. So they they pick up the ukulele because they want that community. They want there's something that has been missing. Like for me, I've always wanted to learn how to play an instrument and have something to sing and you know, just and I didn't have that. I was so responsible for so many years that having this this opportunity to be playful. It was like, wow, this is fun, you know? And and I can accept the fact that I'm not perfect at this, you know? But I can get into the fun factor of it for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, all ukulele is, is your left hand is your tuner, basically. Make sure you're in tune, right? Because it provides the pitch. Your right hand is your metronome, basically. And then you're holding something kind of covering you. So it's almost like holding a teddy bear, right? And, and so you feel safe. Yeah, that's, that's sweet. I love that. that. Yeah. And so you accompany yourself. You don't need to hire anybody to accompany you. So I think older adults with their huge treasure trove of memories, experience, yes. experience it's walking down memory lane. Yeah, basically. absolutely. And in doing that and playing with others, you're connecting with others in a very different way from having a conversation. Yeah. That's true. I love it. That's sweet. So three chord Thursday, just to recap, and then we have to zip. Um, All right. It's three chord Thursday song. is when? It's a thematic function. It's three chord Thursday at three East Coast time. It used to be completely free and every week, but it's now first and third Thursday of each month. It's on my website, anku.com. Okay. I have a web page for every for every uh Thursday that we meet. And um so if you meet in person, it's free to join. But if you and that depends on where I'm hosting. If I'm here, join me on Maui. If I'm in Boston, join me in Boston. Otherwise, there's a small fee to join the zoom session you could do a day okay. pack but this year 2024 the first session is free okay yeah. you could I do an it. annual pass and then you get a huge discount on my courses i give these okay courses. yeah i love it so and ku a-n-n-e-k-u dot com i That's love it right i love it well i'm so glad i I just appreciate you. Um, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate what you do in the community. Uh, I love watching you. So thank you so much for, for being here. And I think this is fun to just connect in this way. Thank you. Thank you, Marlies. Yeah.
How does this stop? How does that happen? Let's see more. Okay. 